I'm Lisa Freeman. I'm the Executive Director of the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission, and I just want to say how grateful we are that you've joined us here today to help share a critical message about our children's safety. Our distinguished roster of state and national level speakers tells you just how important this message is, especially in Louisiana, where it's been known to get a bit hot. We're talking today about pediatric vehicular heat stroke, which is what happens if you leave a child unattended in a car. It's a heartbreaking, totally heartbreaking issue, and we hope that by calling attention to that issue, we can make someone out there think twice before they park their car with a child inside. At this time, I'd also like to introduce you to someone who is the vice chairman of the Board of Commissioners of the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission. He is retired Louisiana State Police Lieutenant Colonel Mark Oxley, and he has a very important message to share with you today from the Honorable Jeff Landry, Governor of our great state. Colonel Oxley. Thank you for being here today on this wonderful, wonderful uh, day that we are looking after our children. This uh, is from our governor, and it reads, Jeff Landry, Governor, Proclamation, whereas pediatric vehicular heart stroke, heat stroke, is a priority for the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission and other public safety advocates in the state of Louisiana, whereas the majority of pediatric vehicular heat stroke deaths occur at home, and the average age of a child who dies is 27.2 months, and child heat stroke occurs when children are forgotten in a vehicle, gain access to the interior of a vehicle, or are knowingly left inside of a vehicle. Whereas on average 37 children die from heat stroke inside hot vehicles each year, for a total of 969 PVH deaths that have been documented in the United States in the past 25 years. Louisiana has had the highest number of pediatric vehicular heat stroke deaths per capita in the United States. And whereas 80% of the total heat rises, rise occurs in the first 30 minutes of the interior vehicle and can be 50 degrees higher than outside and may exceed 150 degrees. And whereas we call on all child caregivers to do their part in promoting the dangers of leaving children in a vehicle or allowing them access to a vehicle unattended at any time. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Landry, do hereby proclaim May 1st, 2024 as Child Heat Stroke Prevention Day in the state of Louisiana. If I may, I'd like to share just a very brief anonymous quote uh, with everyone. What is it that lies most warmly against our hearts and binds together our legacy and the future? What brings our greatest joy and to whom belongs our passionate devotion and steadfast safekeeping for all our days? Is it not our children? There are no adequate words or expression, yet we continue to say, I love you, and smile all the more. And we receive, and we give, and we go on together. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Our Attorney General, Liz Merle, 
sends her best wishes today for our public awareness event as she is en route to the Supreme Court. Her office, however, is well represented here as Larry Freeman, who currently serves as Deputy Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, is joining us. Deputy A.G. Freeman was formerly a state legislator from the Covington area, and in his past and his present positions in public service, he knows firsthand the issues that affect our citizens and their families. Help me welcome Deputy Attorney General Larry Freeman. Thank you, Lisa. And first of all, let me just say, Attorney General Liz Merle sends her sincerest apologies for not being here today on her, her herself. But I am honored to be here and speaking to this really important issue. Um, this is a really significant issue to, in our state. And as a father of two, I can only imagine, and, and can really hardly imagine, ever having, leaving your child in a car to, to, to really suffer a death like, like heat stroke uh, can be. What is, con what is concerning to me is that Louisiana is number one per capita in having these child deaths in a car. But make no mistake, these deaths are totally, totally preventable. Totally preventable. And we have to do something, and I'm so glad that the state police and others are getting together to do this public service announcement to make sure that our citizens are informed and in how to prevent these tragedies. There's only 21 states in the United States that have laws against leaving children in a car, but there's 31 states that have laws against leaving animals in a car. Imagine that. It should be exactly the opposite. We should have 50 states with laws pre uh, preventing this particular tragedy. We do in Louisiana though, and I'm proud to say, that we do have a statute that, pre that prevents and is, makes it illegal for a person to leave a child under six years old unattended in a car. It also allows a police officer who observes a child left unattended and unsupervised for a period of exceeding 10 minutes to do whatever means necessary to rescue that child. That means breaking the window, tearing the door off, whatever needs to be done to save a child. So we are at least leading as one of the 21 states having the law, but we just have to educate our population. In, in 2022, a Lake Charles woman was charged with murder for leaving her baby in her, in her SUV for five hours, resulting in a death. If your child is in a hot car and left in a hot car, I promise you, our office as well as local DAs will prosecute these people to the fullest extent of the law. It is our obligation as law enforcement and the chief legal officer of the state to protect the children of Louisiana from this horrible, horrible tragedy. We have to be very cognizant of this. We have to educate our citizens. We have to educate the people. Because being number one in the nation in this category is unacceptable to General Merle, unacceptable to Colonel Hodges and the rest of law enforcement. And we want to bring that number down. And it should be down to zero. We should have zero deaths of children going forward. So again, thank you all for having me. Thank you for letting me speak today. And I appreciate everyone that's here and all of this, all of the, the distinguished speakers today. Thank you so much. Colonel Robert P. Hodges is the 27th superintendent of Louisiana State Police. And he also serves as the deputy secretary of the Louisiana Department of Public Safety. Because Colonel Hodges prioritizes traffic safety in particular and public safety in general, he and his LSP team are incredibly valued partners in saving the lives of all road users. Help me please welcome Colonel Hodges. Good morning, everyone. Throughout the month, our troopers are collaborating with Louisiana Highway Safety Commission to raise awareness of child heat stroke prevention. Through targeted public education and safety campaigns, 
we aim to achieve the goal of zero deaths related to heat stroke and hot vehicles. Upon taking immediate steps to remove a child locked in a hot vehicle, first responders will administer necessary care and law enforcement will evaluate the situation for potential legal actions. If you encounter a child in a lo locked in an unattended vehicle, please dial 911 immediately to report the incident. Let's all play our part in making our children and community safer. Thank you. Dr. Maggie Gunnels is the Region 6 Administrator for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Dr. Gunnels oversees the federal highway safety programs here in Louisiana, as well in these states, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, and the Indian Nations. Please welcome Dr. Gunnels. Good morning, and, and I'm really honored to be here, and I'm really heartened by seeing so much wonderful support for such an important, important cause. And again, as, as you've heard, this is a preventable situation that we're talking about, and it's so important that everyone understands it. So in 2023, based upon preliminary statistics from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, approximately 40,990 people died in motor vehicle-related crashes on America's roads. And within these deaths we see on our roads, many are preventable, and today, we are talking about preventable deaths and injuries among our most vulnerable passengers, children. And as the days get warmer, we're reminding everyone of the dangers a hot vehicle poses to children. An average of 37 children die from heat stroke every year after being left in a car that, or gaining access to an unlocked vehicle. So it's wonderful to see that, that we have this proclamation Unfortunately, it's unfortunate that we have to do this, but this is such an important strategy for promoting awareness as we all work together on National Heat Stroke Awareness Day to help spread this life-saving message to parents and caregivers. And one of the biggest factors in, this, um, in these preventable deaths and injuries is a change in routine. Many deaths have happened because the morning routine was different. For example, a parent taking a child to daycare who typically doesn't do that, that parental duty. And nearly half of all the heat stroke deaths occur when the child is supposed to be dropped off at school or childcare. And I would just say that I've, I've seen, unfortunately, a number of these deaths, and, and especially the grieving parents and caregivers after these deaths have occurred over the years. And one of the most memorable ones I had was had encountered was an emergency physician who had that very change in routine in Kansas City and was coming forward for the first time to talk about the death of her child for these very reasons. And I will just say that the grief and, and heart sickness that, that this parent, this doctor felt was just really unspeakable. So we do, we do need to work together all across the state of Louisiana and frankly around the United States to prevent these deaths. So never leave your child in a car, even if you think you'll only be gone for a minute. And never leave your child behind. It's just not safe. Some new vehicles even come with the technology to assist in backseat reminders. And of course, if you see a child in distress, take action, act, and call 911 immediately and get help. These deaths are heartbreaking, but they're also preventable. And with your help, we can all save lives. Thank you. Dr. Gina Lagarde is a pediatrician, and she is also the chair of the Louisiana Child Death Review Panel, which investigates child deaths in Louisiana. Dr. Lagarde also serves as Region 9 Administrator and Medical Director for the Louisiana Department of Health's Office of Public Health. Please welcome Dr. Lagarde. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. I've been in public health almost 20 years. And over those 20 years, unfortunately, I've had to review how and why children die. One death, 
one death is one death too many. So today we're talking about vehicular heat stroke. You know, what happened? Why is this happening? And as you already heard, nationwide, uh, heat stroke is one of the leading causes of non-crash vehicular related deaths in children. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. 10 to 15 minutes for an un unattended child to die in a hot vehicle. 10 to 15 minutes. These are preventable deaths and they're very tragic and they're unnecessary. So what happens when you're exposed to extreme heat? Well, you can suffer heat stroke. And what happens with heat stroke? Your core temperature of your body can reach temperatures as high as 104 to 106 degrees. Imagine that for a child. If that, imagine having to suffer heat stroke because they're left in a vehicle unattended. And if it goes untreated, they can actually die from it. Heat stroke is a medical emergency. So why does this happen? I, we, we've heard that the most common cause is when a parent may forget or un, unknowingly and unintentionally left their child in a car. How many times have you had to run back to your car because you forgot something for work or your lunch or something? If it's, if it's not part of your routine, it's very easy to forget. Even if it is part of your routine and you're distracted, you're stressed, you're running late, your child is sleeping, you don't hear them. There's no reminders. Also, some children can wander off. Some children play in unlocked vehicles. And some children can be playing, and depending on the age, they, they can be trapped. So these are very preventable ways that vehicular heat stroke can happen. So let's talk about what happens in that vehicle before we talk about what happens to that child. In the ve vehicles can heat up pretty quickly. If I told all of you to go in your vehicle, roll up your windows, and sit there for about 10 or 15 minutes, I promise you most of you all will have already rolled down your window or would have given up. According to a study published in the American Academy, the Journal of American Academy of Pediatrics, 80% of the maximum temperature rise inside a vehicle can occur within the first 15 minutes, or sometimes within the first 15 to 30 minutes of you closing the door. The maximum internal temperature of the vehicle, according to the study, was attained within 60 minutes. And what they noticed in, with this study is that they, they saw a temperature rise of a minimum of 40 degrees from the time that door was closed to the time the maximum temperature was reached. So imagine on a day like today when it's about 80 degrees, add 40 degrees to that. And it can even get hotter in a car. The study also found that even if you crack the window by an inch and a half, it made no difference to the rise of the temperature or to the maximum temperature reach. Also, some people will think, well, I just had the air conditioner running. It's real cool in here. I could just go run into the store for a few minutes. Again, that did not change. The, the level of rise of that temperature in the vehicle, nor did it change the maximum temperature reached. So, what happens to the child in this hot vehicle? Infants and very young children, and I mean those under four years of age, are more susceptible to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. What happens? The body temperature heats up, and it's a very rapid rise, and a child's body temperature rises three to five times faster than an adult. The temp that a child can absorb heat faster than an adult because they have more surface area relative to their small body mass, and then they can dehydrate faster. Children are just slower to rapid changes in temperature because of their immature thermoregulatory mechanism or their sweating mechanism. Therefore, they sweat less than an adult, and they can't cool down. So imagine adding humidity on top of that. On a humid day, you walk out, and all of a sudden, whoo, it takes your breath away. Well, humidity uh, impacts how you sweat. Your sweat won't evaporate. Therefore, you don't, you don't cool as quickly. So as the longer this child is in this, this car, their core body temperature will rise. 
if their body temperature reaches 104 to 106 degrees, they can experience heat stroke. What happens with heat stroke? Mental status changes, confusion, delirium, loss of consciousness, seizures. The blood pressure can drop, internal organs can shut down, lack of oxygen to the brain. And again, if there's not intervention, it can be death. Preventable death. And keep in mind that babies and young children really don't have a whole lot of control over their environment. If I set you in the car, you can open up the car door, roll down the window, take some clothes off, fan, drink some water. Imagine a baby in a car seat. Imagine a child that could not manually um, open the door. And also keep in mind, not only heat stroke, they can suffer from thermal burns too. If you sit on a hot seat, touch that hot uh, steering wheel, it burns. The metal in that car can burn. And also babies aren't, babies can't express themselves. They can't say, oh, I'm thirsty. Oh my goodness, I have a headache. My head is about to explode. My muscles are cramping. I'm about to pass out. I'm about to throw up. So it's important also for parents to be able to recognize signs, you know, uh, or even a passerby to recognize that if the child is awake, you still have some time. If that child is unconscious, we don't know what part of that 10 or 15 minutes we, we will have. So it is important, it is important to act to prevent pediatric vehicular heat stroke. And ACT is an acronym. A is for avoid. Avoid leave, leaving your child alone and unattended in a car. Don't let your children play in a car. C, create. Create reminders. Put something in the back seat near your child, like your cell phone, your wallet, a shoe, something that you know you will need when you reach that destination. That is a way and a reminder to, to, uh, that you have a child in your vehicle. And the T for act is take action. If you see something, do something. If you see something, say, say something. If you see a child unattended in a vehicle, especially in a hot vehicle, please call 911. Because again, it only takes how many? 10 to what? 15 minutes for a child to die. for this opportunity to draw attention to this very, very preventable death caused by heat stroke and a child left in a vehicle. Thank you, Dr. Lagarde, for that wealth of information. Toreen Crepe, who is our next speaker and our final speaker, is the president of Safe Kids Worldwide, which is an organization that works with 400 coalitions throughout the United States to protect children from preventable injuries. We keep hearing that word, preventable. Toreen has dedicated her entire career to making a meaningful difference in the lives of children and families, especially when it comes to our most vulnerable demographic, those babies, those infants and toddlers. Please help me welcome Toreen Crepe. Good morning and thank you to our distinguished guests, but most importantly I want to thank the law enforcement. They're the first responders who see these deaths that are preventable to heat stroke. In my work each and every day, I lead a national network of coalitions around the U.S. and in 22 countries around the world. This is one death that is preventable. Our greatest wish today, as you heard from everyone here, is that heat stroke won't claim the life of another child. Most importantly, all of these deaths are preventable. And I want to just share with you, it happened to all of us. It has happened to many of us in our families. There is no socioeconomic, no social demographic who this won't happen to. Since 1998, at least 969 children across the United States have died from heat stroke. Right here alone in Louisiana, you've heard that there's been 37 deaths. We don't want to see another death this year. I will tell you, if we can do exactly what the doctor said, and that is to act. Remember, no child should never be left alone in a car, not even for one minute, one second. Create reminders. Put your work ID, your laptop in the back seat. 
to remind you to check the back seat before you leave. And most importantly, you heard 31 laws for pets and 21 for children. Unexplainable. And what that means today is that we need you to take action if you see a child in a car. Even if you see the window crack, it's not enough. You can look behind me and see what the temperature is in that car and what the temperature is outside, and it's double the number. Please, we all can do this together. Let's join forces here in Louisiana and around the United States to protect and prevent another child from dying in this horrific way to heat stroke. Thank you. Thank you, Toreen, for your quarter century of work on behalf of children throughout our country and, and the rest of the world. And thank you for making Louisiana a focus state to launch more initiatives that will help to save lives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. We are not done yet. Uh, we're all going to check the big thermometer behind us to see uh, what, what uh, Ms. Creppy has referred to as a double-digit difference, uh, or double di difference between the ambient temperature that we're all enjoying out here in the lovely shade and what the interior of that vehicle is now at. So let the numbers sort of speak for themselves. And thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>